Former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull led the Republican movement to the failed 1999 referendum on cutting ties with the monarchy. He joins us now. Malcolm Turnbull, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. So did you watch it last night? <laughs> you know, I didn't. I watched bits of it and I read the summary of it, but uh, no, I, I didn't watch the whole thing. And what was your takeaway from it? Well, it could, you know, it's clearly an unhappy, you know, an unhappy family, or at least uh, Meghan and Harry are very unhappy. It sounds very sad. Um, it's, yeah, it's, look, no matter how lofty or uh, royal people are, these, you know, human, um, pa human pain and family breakdowns and family dissent and so forth is all very real and everyone can relate to it. So I think a lot of people would have been feeling very sad about the uh, account of events given in that interview. Yes, and there are some very inter um, important issues about mental health and racism that have come up in that interview. Sure. But why do you think now is a time to revisit questions about Australia's connection to the monarchy? What has well, it I mean, changed, people, basically? Look, Lisa, we're re we revisit the Republic issue all the time. I mean, it pops up in the news uh, regularly, and we should. It's our country, it's our constitution, um, you know, and our head of state should be an Australian citizen, should be one of us, not the queen or king of the United Kingdom. So it's it's a simple patriotic uh, objective to have an Australian citizen as our head of state. We should be so proud of our country and our fellow countrymen and women that we should say only an Australian should be eligible to be our head of state. Only an Australian is eligible to be our prime minister. So why should it be any different? And now, you're sure uh, that I, the two-state plebiscite, uh, the two-step plebiscite process that you've put forward is the way for Australia to look at it? Yeah, yeah I, I do, Lisa. I mean, I think we've got... What, what went wrong in 99 in the referendum was really that we, in the Republican movement, ended up fighting on two fronts. We had, on the one hand... The monarchists who said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, and on the other hand, we had the people who wanted to elect the president by direct election saying, utterly dishonestly, I might add, uh, vote no to this form of a republic uh, and you'll have another chance in a few years' time to vote for a directly elected president. Well, that was always a lie. Um, it was a classic case of letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. And that's the real reason why we why we lost. I mean, we didn't look by the standard of Australian referendums. We didn't do too badly. Uh, but you know, if you don't, that's binary, right? You either win or you lose, mm. regardless of the margin. So I think what we've got to do is have the debate about how to elect the president first. So have a plebiscite about that. You know, thrash that out uphill and down dale for a few months. Have a vote on it, uh, and then once the people have made up their mind on that then incorporate that mode of election into the constitutional amendments that you then put up in the formal uh, referendum that will uh, re you know, result, if it's passed, in changing the constitution. Australia's support for the monarchy ebbs and flows depending on who's visiting and various other factors. And certainly uh, the last survey that I had a look at was just after Harry and Meghan's visit to Australia and it was at an all-time low, 20, you know, lowest uh, support for a republic, I should say, in 25 years. So do you think that there's actually really the mood out there to change things? Well, I, I don't think the mood is there today. Uh, you know, the, in politics, you've got to remember that opinion polls are just a snapshot in time. Um, and they're often taken out of context. You need to have the sense that this is an issue we need to address with. You've got to get the issue back on the front burner. Now, in 1998, 99, and the years before that, we had the centenary of federation coming up in 2001. And so the, you know, the, the, the push was to make a big change to our constitution in line with that deadline. And that got a lot of momentum. My view uh, in 99 was that if we voted no to the Republic, uh, we wouldn't come back to the issue until after the end of the Queen's reign. Now, I know some people disagree with me and, I, and I'd love to think I was wrong, but I think honestly, subsequent events have demonstrated that judgment was right. So I think the, t the next timing will be that huge watershed when the Queen's reign ends, whether she dies or whether she abdicates, 
that is going to be an extraordinary watershed in history. And there'll be a lot of debate and and commentary, all of it very positive for the Queen. I'm sure she's, you know, she's been an extraordinary uh, head of state. And I think, frankly, in Australia, there are more Elizabethans than there are monarchists. Hmm. And so I think after the end of the Queen's reign, that is the time for us to say, OK, we've passed that watershed. Do we really want to have whoever happens to be the head of state of the, the king or queen of the UK uh, automatically our head of state? I mean, it's we, we have every other position in our constitution, you know, in our constitution and our system of government. One way or another, we get to choose. You know, we vote them in, or we vote people in who choose them and select them. But the monarch of uh, of the United Kingdom, whoever they may be is our head of state. They could be a good person, a bad person. They could be whatever. I mean, it's, it is literally out of our hands. Mr Turnbull, that's could, ridiculous. could I just ask you very briefly, um, since you were last on this program, we've heard from Christian Porter, who has given uh, a very strenuous uh, denial of the accusation that was laid against him. The Prime Minister is still saying that he can't see a need for an investigation. Is there anything that you have seen or heard that has made you change your view of this situation? Well, look, my, my my view very simply is that um, that uh, Porter was right. I mean, I think he should, could have done it sooner. He was absolutely right to out himself. Uh, he's perfectly entitled to as to, to defend himself vigorously as he has done. And I look, I completely understand the argument, actually, you know, about the rule of law and about the fact that there's can't be a criminal investigation or let alone a prosecution because the complainant is deceased. Uh, but I think in practical terms, looking at this as both in both political and legal terms, uh, the best thing that could happen for Christian Porter is for there to be an inquiry, mm. uh, which because that would enable there to be a process which would enable the issue uh, to be resolved. Uh, the, the problem is it remains unresolved in the minds of many people. And, you know, we we all... So that's... So, yeah. you know, it, I mean, that, that, that's my... If I was in Porter's position, uh, I would have uh, defended myself um, and then said, I'm open to a, uh, you know, an inquiry, you know, pres you know, by, you know, a retired judge, the usual sort of yeah. impartial expert person that we appoint. But I think that would be in his best interest. But that's not something that either he or the government wants. So I guess it won't happen. Mr Turnbull, we'll have to leave it there. But thank you very much for your time this morning. Yeah, thanks so much.